Hello Aries, hope you're doing well today. Thanks for stopping by and let's take a look at the energies in your love life. We're going to get two more shuffles for you. And there we go. Okay. All right, bottom of the deck. Ooh, Ten of Cups, Pisces, energy, sweetness, happiness, joy. For the simplicity of feeling deep emotions of love, it can be a card of family, it can be a card of romantic love, it is a, typically a card of a happily ever after marriage or committed relationship. Okay, so the energy underneath says that you've had an improvement lately in your love life. Okay, so let's go ahead and look. So that's the overall energy, Ten of Cups. Whoops. Okay. We have the High Priestess in the recent past, Cancer Energy. This is mutual energy between you and your beloved. The current mutual energy, good. Virgo energy, problem solving, moving forward steadily, creating stability. Okay. How your person sees, views a relationship. We have the Two of Cups, Cancerian energy, Yin Yang energy, two people coming together as one. It is a card in the Rider Waite deck that is a card that is a bride and groom taking vows. So your person feels very committed to you. How they view you, Aries, is the King of Swords. It's Aquarius energy. They see you as being detached at this time taking a very cool, calm, and collected view, uh, viewpoint of things. They think that you're trying to problem solve some issues that are going on in your life. In their heart space, the Three of Swords. Your person is feeling very heartbroken. The Three of Swords is Libra energy. They feel as though you might be attracted to someone else and they notice that you're detached. So for some of you, they'll feel as though you're problem solving whether you wanna break up with them or not. For others, it will just be that they're feeling as though when you look off in this direction, Aries, that there may be a third party interest that you have, not necessarily more than that. Let's see, how do they feel you, the two of you are going to go move forward? 10 of Pentacles, okay. So these are Virgo cards. And so it's really important energy because your person sees the two of you moving forward in a very stable fashion. I love the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles together. This is also a card of committed love, right? You have what presumably is, uh, you know, a husband, a wife, children. We have a dog here. You know, all of the accoutrement of having what we consider, quote unquote, the good life. Um, but this big pinnacle says that there's a ton of security, there's a ton of stability, and that allows everyone to have self-expression within that and within the commitment to one another and themselves. You know, you have to be committed to yourself to have happiness. What is the hidden energy between the two of you? The moon card, okay? Pisces energy, very confusing time for the relationship. Both of you feel as though you want to be together, but we, you're trying to balance the energies. The moon card is, when we look at Pisces energy, we're really looking at either spirituality and ascension or devolving into something that doesn't feel very good. That We would, we would call it dark, but I don't, I don't want to go too deeply with that. It's just when we feel at a loss to know what to do in a relationship. So both of you feel as though you're underwater. Water is all about your emotions. So you're both feeling as though you're not quite sure you know, what's going on in the relationship. But it's also, I don't see a lot of communication going on here. I see a lot of emotion. I see a lot of ways of looking at things, but I'm not seeing a lot of interaction. The Two of Cups is very interactive, as is the Ten of Cups, but there's a lot that's going unsaid right now with the High Priestess energy. This is a very, um, very virginal type energy, too. It's very... Um, it's like a purity of thought, a purity of mind, and both of you are very, very much invested in how you, how you think about relationships, as we all are. Let's see what Spirit's recommending here for you. The Devil card, okay. So Spirit is 
asking you at this time to look at the energies that are not serving you in this relationship. The devil card energy is always about the temptation to try to manipulate, to try to control. I, when I see the devil as a professional reader, I really see it as like, okay, everybody's holding on to a whole list of items. It's like a checklist from the past. Well, if he really loved me or if she really loved me, they would do this, this, and this. And the truth of the matter is, is that everybody loves differently. But it is really, Spirit is saying you need to let go of any toxicity. You need to do some soul searching here. This is Capricorn energy. Remember Capricorn and Saturn is all about the taskmaster telling you, do the work. And that really is the message. And mission of the devil card is it you need to give up the desire to manipulate or control anything to get what you want because it's really not going to serve you this is a chase into the zones of hell it's a chase into what can unravel you and undo you as a couple the outcome card, though, for this week is Five of Wands. You're both really... I The Five of Wands is a very good card in my viewpoint. And the reason I say that is that you start to become aware of your ego drives. You know, arguments usually are silly. They're usually childish. It's, um, it's the energy that says that you, the two of you may like conflict or you may find yourself in conflict. But the Five of Wands says it's equal, darling. It's very equal. The, both of you have a drive to sort of be competitive with each other. No, my idea, my way, this way, that way. I'm right, I'm right. You know, and that's devil energy and that's what's unraveling. Or I'm not going to say your relationship is unraveling, but it is what's causing a lot of discomfort right now. The Five of Wands is ego-driven energy. So it really is. I always like to say when I see ego-driven energy that you're fighting about who's right when the question is actually what's right. If you start to think about, well, like what's the right solution for us or what is right in this situation instead of who's right, then we get out of all of this devil energy. We get out of the moon energy because we're no longer in our egos. We get into this more um, very intense intellectual energy, which is air sign energy, which in this case, I believe would be very good. So let's go ahead and look and see what's going on here in terms of the clarifiers. The Ten of Cups says that when it's good, this relationship is fantastic. When it's at its best, you've probably never enjoyed love so much as you do with your person. You just want, you're ego driven and obsessed and you sink when you can't have more of this. Okay, it causes heartbreak, it causes you to pull back from each other, it causes you to go silent with one another. Oh, <laughs> I can't make this up. The Ten of Cups is clarifying the Ten of Cups. So part of what the message is to me when I look at that is really just making the choice to get up every day, play some music, get into this sort of very Piscean energy. Music is ruled by Pisces as is dance. So I would almost get up and say, you know, at least spiritually do a little dance in the morning and, you know, give thanks for the relationship that is very powerful. The Ten of Cups is a, a wonderful, wonderful energy. And, you know, to be really appreciative of it, we'll expand it. Okay, why do we have the High Priestess here? Well, this is interesting because I'm getting that this is, it's good. I love the High Priestess here because it shows that this is wisdom. This is really you, both of you really thinking about trying to make things better. Both of you are getting out of holding back. Both of you are very concerned about the well-being of the relationship. Both of you are realistically concerned that if you do not make a good offer to one another, that you're going to lose this relationship into sadness and that the cups of love will, will pour out. Now, what I like about the reversal here 
in the Five of Cups is that you're curbing, you know, you're starting to curb that energy. Upright, it's all, all about, oh, what I didn't get, what I don't have, you know, why this person isn't exactly perfect every moment of the day for me. Well, that's not the intention in life. It's how do we perfect ourselves upon our relationships. And so I like it in the reversal because the cups of love are not poured out. It shows fives are all about developing through your conflicted ideas and feelings into something much more positive. Why do we have the Knight of Pentacles? Why do we have the Knight of Pentacles? Why is it here for us? <laughs> Sometimes it, I'm going to take those. They're stuck. Okay. So we have a relationship that's well developed. The Knight of Pentacles is a relationship typically that's been around. Now this could be individually, but it really speaks to the fact that this is not a new beginning. You're working steadily to move forward. You're not being foolish. You're not being impulsive or you are. Wait a minute, let me explain this. <laughs> when we get the full card reversed, it is not a new beginning. It's a continuation. It can indicate, though, with the fool energy that there is foolishness that undermines moving forward. Because a fool upright, yes, it's foolish and innocent, but it's more positive energy. When we get the fool reversed, we get people being naive and doing things that are not in the best interest of working together. Sometimes both of you want the other one to give you something specific and it looks like a lot of times you don't communicate your expectations which then puts you in the energy of becoming sort of problem solving and aloof but in the process of that you get in your head more than in your you know sitting deep in the saddle of your emotions so let's look and see what the Two of Cups is here. Why does your person see the Two of Cups as how they view the relationship? And what do we have here? We have the Ace of the Ace of Wands says that your person does not want the emphasis to be on sex. Your person is in this hermit energy of searching for answers. They your person is very determined not to allow the fates to decide this relationship. Your person wants to have the Two of Cups and they're strategically planning, even in bad times. You know, when we hear the wedding vows in sickness and in health for better or worse. Well, <laughs> that's all about the Wheel of Fortune. And your person is really quite determined that even when the wheel is reversed and the fates are not giving you good times, that that there's an internal study instead of an external study of the situation. So your person, instead of trying to find answers outside, we have a double sort of internal study here with this Hermit card. So it really says that your person wants to fortify the relationship so that no matter what day it is, no matter what circumstance is going on around you, that the two of you are stable and in love. The other two cards that came up here is that they are not going anywhere and they are not fantasizing. Your person is not, they know that they're going to make the right decision and they know that they're not leaving anything behind. They are very much committed to their ideals of winning in love. I like it. It's great energy. So why do they see you as a king of swords energy? Why do they see you as a king of swords energy? This is Aquarius energy. This is, I always think of this as like a Dr. Do little card. Like, uh, you know, talking to the animals, all those birds, messengers. This person is thinking about a lot of messages that are coming in. The Ten of Swords. I like this. It's giving up victim mentality. That's how your person feels. Your person feels as though sometimes you feel stabbed in the back. But I also like the fact that the 10 is actually walking away from that feeling and your person recognizes it. 
The five of coins reverse, great card. In the upright, we see a person who's so in their emotions that you can't see the forest for the trees or the key for the lock. So when we get it in the reverse, your person feels though, as though you are really coming out of a period of time of sadness, um, that you're getting more balanced, shall we say, because when we look at air sign energy, it's moving very quickly, but they also like the fact that you're exhibiting some, some different feelings and attitudes and you're staying more in your head and less in that fiery Aries energy, which can be very reactive on, you know, on days where you're stressed out. The star card though says that your person thinks that you are a little bit negative, that where there's such a beautiful relationship that you don't see it quite now, the star card reversed is, same, you know, what we see here is that when it's in its upright, that you're very enlightened. They do think that you're seeking enlightenment, but that you haven't arrived yet. Now, of course, this is an opinion. Uh, you know, everybody has their foibles because your person is joining you right here in this energy of the moon. They're right there with you. They're right there with you with the devil energy. So take it with a grain of salt. You know, what other people think of us really is not our business because it can truly interfere with doing our own work when we get caught in our ego. So it's really good to sort of, you know, not get too caught up in that energy. Why is your person feeling like there could be a separation? Why do they feel as though other people interfere in your relationship? Why do they feel heartbroken? Why does your person feel heartbroken, Aries? What is going on here? The Queen of Cups energy. Well, they're not so much in their emotions anymore. Your person is really coming out of this feeling of deep love, which is inexplicable, and into this feeling that you know, they're going to really have to deal, they're going to have to really deal with some sort of crisis, and it's an emotional crisis, outbursts possibly. They feel as though in their heart space that things are improving dramatically. Great energy. Your person is very much, could probably an earth sign, because we have a lot of Virgo energy. It could be Virgo, but it could be Taurus, you know, it could be Capricorn, because there's, you really do have everything here. But what we see is in your heart space, your person really is desirous of maintaining their independence financially, um, but they are hoping, and they're heartbroken for you, in that they feel as though you haven't arrived at some sort of space of autonomy yet. They feel as though you're working on it, but again, your person is feeling very much that they're in it to win it, that Virgo energy always completes every chore. And so your person is moving away from a period of feeling as though you may care about somebody else or you may be hung up on someone else into very um, strong sort of problem solving energy. Like, let's do it. Let's get this done. All right. So let's see what your energy is here with the Ten of Pentacles. I love this. This is how your person sees the two of you. They don't think that you work together as a team. I'll tell you that. So that that's one thing that they want to see improve. And they blame themselves too. I mean, they're, I don't want to say blame, but they're seeing the error of their contributions or lack thereof. The lover's card in reverse is your person doesn't want to make the choice. It is a choice card. They, at this point, are not seeing you, quote unquote, as a soulmate. I think this in the upright can be, you know, they do feel that they're very much in love with you. But the lover's reversed says that they don't know where they're at in this connection. The five of wands reversed, giving up ego-driven arguments. I love it. And, oh, lovely. That's how they plan on finding stability with you, is they don't know that you can work together. That's a concern. But what we see is your person is becoming less your lover and more your friend. So for some of you, Aries, that's not going to you know necessarily be what you want. But we'll see. I mean, I think that all good relationships start with a deep core of friendship. So your person looks as though they're moving in this direction of trying to improve things by just stopping behaviors in which they have created their fair share of problems. You're not feeling defensive, good. 
it's really feeling as though you don't really have to defend yourself. You have to figure out what's going on. Right now, we see a lack of romance. We see a lack of movement. What else do we need to know here? All right. So what's hidden here in the energy is that both of you have very strong philosophies about what relationships are supposed to look like, how they're supposed to go. This is Taurus energy. Um, so you have Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo energy here. So it shows that you have a very practical bent in your relationship right now. I like the trifecta of Earth signs, grounded. Both of you want this to be a relationship of long-term and great quality. Both of you have very, perhaps, rigid ideas. And the reason I say it is because of the Devil card and the Moon card. You, you both have to start to let go of he should. I would be happy if only my person would. It's that sort of almost like thumping, thumping. I'm right. I'm right. I grew up with this belief. I'm right. And so it does show that the stairway to heaven, though, is to let go with this Pisces energy of holding those thoughts so closely to your chest, the shoulds, I just call them the shoulds. Well, my person should really do this if they want to make me happy. Well, making you happy is your work, making themselves happy is their work, and the two of you together as a team should be pulling together so you enjoy your happiness and share it together with the Trinity, which is, you know, the friendship card. So what we see here with the devil card, the devil card is spirit really telling both of you to work on, you know, your inner stuff. I mean, it really is coming down to that. So let's see what spirit has to say about it. Oh, beautiful. Spirit is saying, don't try to control. You know, at the end of the day, love deeply. Be, be calm in your emotions. Know that life is short and it's, you know, it's not promised, you know, like the old saying, getting older is not promised to anyone. It's really saying, give up control, be deep in your feelings, own them, and do your best to stay of one mind. You know, don't keep juggling the ideas that the two of you won't make it. So what we're seeing here is the ability for both of you to, um, you know, just give up the stuff that gets all in your head give up the stuff that really makes you just sort of crazy making, you know? Make that choice. Make it actively. Your thoughts will always control your emotions. If you want to feel happier, then control your thoughts. Think happier thoughts or think more positively. All right, so the Five of Wands energy here is, so that's ego-driven energy, but you know, it's ego-driven. These people aren't going to really hurt each other, except if it gets out of control, you can sort of, you know, burn up the relationship and say things beautiful. Oh, nice. The chariot card is here for you. Moving ahead swiftly, being able to harness the disparities and the differences and really enjoy the ride. Really enjoy the ride. The King of Wands reverse says that this is not going to happen quickly, that somebody probably, you both need to take a leadership role of your own emotions and what you contribute to the relationship. The investment so far, is, as you both view it, hasn't really paid off, but the Chariot card says it can. It absolutely can. You have a great reading here. What I'm seeing is that some attitude adjustments and some inner searching about, you know, how can I be a better teammate is going to help you continue on this journey. So I really see this as a mid mid time in a relationship when you've gotten over the honeymoon stage, you're still deeply in love with each other. And now, you know, real life has settled in and it's seeped in all around you. And now it's time to really manifest the love that's already here by just simply doing our part you know, as individuals, you know. So let's see where you're at in your love journey with your person, Aries. Let's see where you're at in your love. Let's see your love journey. We're going to pull one for you and one for your partner here. Okay. Heart of the moment, living in the moment, 
not getting ahead of yourself, Aries. And look at, doesn't that look like a fire sign card? It's really fiery. In the heart of the moment, in the, heart, in the heat of the moment, make sure you stay in your heart space, okay? Let's see what we have for your person. Ethereal touch. Ah. Your person wants to be healed and is healed by your touch. That when you touch them, it helps them become more grounded. When you touch them lightly, you brush their arm, you touch their cheek, you, you know, you put your hand on their back as you pass in the kitchen if you're in there. You know, just little touches along the way really kind of calm this person down. So, you know, really, really sitting very deep in the sweet space of where your heart is, is going to help you at this time to get to your Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups is here. What's getting in the way, it's sort of like a messy closet. You just clean up the closet and you go, oh, this is so fantastic. What was I thinking? Why did I let it be messy? All right, so let's see what we have here for your, this is the God, the um, Goddess Oracle deck. What do we have? Divine Feminine, Magic, Receptive, and you're magical, you're receptive, and you have so much power here. So whoever the feminine energy is here, there's tons of depth and strength. Oh, beautiful hi hidden knowledge, Akashic Records, and silent understanding. I'm going to leave it there. Aries, thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you found this helpful, and uh, thank you. Bye-bye.